All right, here we are reviewing for the first two sections in chapter five for our quiz tomorrow. So the first problem asks us to find the composition of functions where we're gonna take four, plug it into the G function, get a value, and then plug it into the F function. So if I find G of four in the G function, I'm gonna put four in for X, so I have one minus three times four squared. Four squared is 16, three times 16 is 48, so one minus 48 is negative 47. So I'm gonna take this now, this is negative 47, and I'm gonna plug this now into the F function. So I'm gonna find F of negative 47. So two times negative 47 squared. Um, when I multiply this, and I did this on the calculator, negative 47 squared is a positive number, and when I multiply that by two, I get 4418. In part two, I'm taking zero, plugging it into the G function, getting an answer and plugging that answer back into the G function as well. So G of zero, and I'm going back here, one minus three times zero squared. So this is one minus zero, which is one. Now I'm gonna take one, because G of zero is one, and I'm gonna plug that back into the G function and that is one minus three times one squared. One squared is one times three is three and one minus three is negative two. Now we're finding G of F of X. So I'm gonna take the entire F function and plug it in to where I see an X in the G function. So this time we don't have a value, we're just taking the entire expression. So this would be um, actually g of f of x is 2x squared. And I'm gonna plug that in. So I have one minus three times what x equals, and just 2x squared, and that is also squared. So this is two groups of 2x squared. So this is one minus three times, two times, two squared is four, and x squared squared is x to the fourth power. So this is one minus 12 x to the fourth, and there's nothing else I can do with that. Finding the domain of f of g of x. Now the domain is all real numbers except for the restrictions. And because f of x and g of x are both um, polynomials, there are no restrictions. So the domain, because they are both polynomials, the domain is all real numbers. In number five, we have uh, to find the domain of g of f of x. So if I look at f of x, I know that x cannot equal negative three. That would give me a denominator of zero. All right, so that is one restriction on our domain. And now if I put f of x into the g function where I see an x. So I'm gonna have g of one over x plus three. And this is negative two over x, which is one over x plus three minus one. Now, I can't just say that x cannot equal one because remember it goes into the f function first. So um, I'm not gonna 
get this equal to 1, but I know that this denominator cannot equal 0. Okay? Or this value of f of x cannot equal 1. So 1 over x plus 3 cannot equal 1. And that just happens if I add 1 to both sides. Um, I'm just bringing that 1 over here. So now I'm going to multiply both sides by x plus 3. And that gives me, um, let's see, what does that give me? Um, 1 cannot equal x plus 3, and if I subtract 3, um, x cannot equal negative 2. So my domain here for this composition of functions for all x, x cannot equal negative 2, and x cannot equal negative 3. In number six, similar type of problem. We want to find the domain of f of g of x. In g of x, if I set my denominator equal to zero, or it cannot equal zero, um, I would add one, divide by three, so I know that x cannot equal one third. But now I'm going to replace all of this into the apps or into the square root symbol. So f of negative 2 over 3x minus 1 is what I'm finding. This is my x value now to plug in where I see an x. So that has to be in the square root. And x now is negative 2 over 3x minus 1, and then plus 3. And I know that what's inside the square root sign has to be greater than or equal to zero. So we don't get any uh, imaginary numbers. So if I just take this part, set it equal or greater than or equal to zero, I'm going to subtract three. So that gives me negative two over three X minus one has to be greater than or equal to negative three. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3x minus 1. So that's negative 2 has to be greater than negative 3 times 3x minus 1. Negative 2 has to be greater than or equal to negative 9x plus 3. And if I subtract 3 on both sides, um, negative 9x, I'm just flipping this around here. My uh, sign is still opening up to the other side of 9x. I shouldn't have done that this side. I don't want to confuse you, but um, I just kind of put the 9x on the left side, um, but it's still opening up towards the number. So when I subtract 3 here, I get negative 5. Now I'm going to divide by negative 9, which means I need to turn my sign around. And x has to be greater than or equal to negative 5, or er, positive 5 ninths. So my domain is for all x, x, um, cannot equal one-third, and x has to be greater than or equal to five-ninths. For number six, it's asking us to determine if the functions are one-to-one. -one. So number six, seven, and eight. For number six, if I look at my domain here, the values in my domain are B, D, J, and C. And these are all different, so that means that it's a function. But if I look at the range, I, I have to have all different values in the range as well. And in the range, I have K, D, P, P. So notice here, I have P appearing twice. 
So this is not one to one because every value in the domain is not going to a unique Y value. Okay, everything in the Y values, all the Y values have to be different. Number seven, um, I can use the horizontal line test. And if I notice here, it hits in more than one spot. So this is not one-to-one -one because of the horizontal line test. And this little tail here was a little mistake, um, but if I look at the horizontal line test here, um, the horizontal line always hits the function in one spot. So yes, this function is one-to-one. -one. All right, moving along on the other side. It's asking us to graph the inverse here. So I'm going to just draw in this y equals x line because I know that a graph has to be reflective over that line. So inverses are symmetric to which line? And that was y equals x. And I can kind of try to guess where these points are, um, but I can also make a table of values for my x and y values of my function. And in my function, I have the point negative 3, negative 2, um, this one is negative 2, 0. This one is over 0, up 1, and this is over 2, up 4. If I want the inverse of x, I need to just switch the x and y values. So this first point becomes negative 2, negative 3. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. So that's going to come down here a little bit. Okay, a little off there. Um, over zero, down two. This is point here. Um, over one, up zero. There's the reflection of that point. And over four, up two. Here's the reflection of this point. I think I'm a little off here of this line. Um, but I should connect the points, and I have this graph here. Number 11, find the inverse of f of x. So the first thing we'll do, we'll change f of x into y. So I have y equals negative 4x. I'm going to flip x and y. So x equals negative 4y, and now I'm going to solve for y. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4. So y is x divided by negative 4, or negative x over 4, and this is my inverse function. Number 12 asks me to find the inverse, so here's y. I'm going to replace x and y. So I have x equals 4 over y plus 2. I want to solve for y now, so I'll multiply both sides by y plus 2. Uh, distribute, so I have xy plus 2x equals 4. I'll subtract 2x, so xy equals negative 2x plus 4, and then I'm going to divide by x, and I'm going to just divide every part here by x. So y is negative 2 plus 4 over x, and this is my inverse function.
the inverse of g of x. Again, I'm going to replace x and y. So I have x equals 2y over 3y minus 1. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 minus 1, 3y minus 1. Uh, this is 3xy minus 1x is 2y. Now I want to put all the x, I'm sorry, all the y terms on one side. So this term has a y and this term has a y. So I'm going to have 3xy minus 2y because I want to send that over. And I want to put the other terms that do not have a y on the other side. So I'm going to add x to both sides. Now I'll factor out a y, and this gives me 3x minus 2. And I'll divide both sides by 3x minus 2 to get y by itself. All right, so those are cancel, and the inverse of the function is x over 3x minus 2. And the last part asks us to complete the chart. So in this part right here, my domain works for all numbers except for when this equals zero. And that would give me the value of one third. So x cannot equal one third. Now the inverse function of this, um, and we did this in number 13, is x over 3x minus 2. So in this one, if I set this equal to 0, x cannot equal, I'm going to add 2, divide by 3, x cannot equal 2 thirds. Now, to find the range, and remember the range is the y values, the values in the domain of the original function become the values of the range in the inverse function. So here, my y values cannot be 1 half. And up here, my y values cannot be 2 thirds. All right, so just like over here, in my original function, this is the set of values for x in my domain and they become in the inverse function the, the range. And the range in the original function becomes the inverse function's domain. So the same will be held true here. The original function domain is the inverse function range and vice versa. All right, and that is all for this review.